I'm starting my class. Ah, Syed, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Hi, how are you doing? How are you? Not too bad. Okay, so we're just about ready to start. It's 12.10. Um, so, um, so Syed, what I'll ask you to do is uh, keep an eye on the chat. And, For sure. Um, uh, you, are the, you are a co-host now. So uh, if someone raises their hand, um, actually, the, the way that we'll do it is that if someone wants to ask a question, they should, um, they should raise their hand and maybe type out the question. And then you'll be able to zero in on it. And uh, um, if it's appropriate, just uh, ask them to unmute themselves or unmute them for them, you know, and then we'll be able to get a question uh, through. We'll see how sure. this works. Uh, otherwise, just mute, mute yourself. I won't control your your um, your microphone. If you need okay. to talk, just unmute yourself and talk. Interrupt me. Um, would you prefer that I answer in the chat or I answer verbally? Uh, well, you could. The, the The point is that if the question is good for everyone, then you should interrupt me and ask the person to ask the question or ask it yourself, so that everyone can hear. Okay. Okay. Okay, welcome everyone. This is uh, Matt 240, Algebra 1. <clears throat> My name is Marco Gualtieri. I'm a professor in the math department and I work on mathematical physics. Um, <clears throat> I assume that you've all connected to uh, Quercus and you've all connected to, um, to, to the website, but let's, uh, let's just go through that. Oh, 
and by the way, if, if anyone notices uh, that there is someone who can't access the, uh, the, the Zoom meeting, there is a YouTube sharing link. Uh, there's a YouTube streaming link, sorry. And let me put that into the chat. Okay, this, um, this is the syllabus for the course. It is, uh, it's on my webpage under my courses and uh, the webpage itself is the syllabus. Um, so today is the day where we decide on the syllabus. So uh, let me just go through it quickly. Um, <clears throat> It's obviously a little bit different this year than uh, any other year. I've taught this course several times. Um, so, right, so, so we have, we're going to have five teaching assistants, okay? And they're gonna be your main contact for um, questions about the material. First, you're gonna go to Piazza and um, then to the TAs, and then to me. Um, we haven't yet uh, completely decided on, the, uh, on how the tutorial sections will be broken up, but the tutorial sections are essentially, uh, they're kind of informal. The, the TAs will not be presenting lectures in the tutorial sections. Instead, it's going to be um, a kind of informal. You'll be able to ask questions. You'll be able to bring up questions on the assignment that you had problems with and the TAs might present uh, pieces of that uh, material. Um, and uh, basically when you're registered, if you're registered to a particular tutorial section that will be linked to a particular TA and you'll be getting uh, emails about that uh, soon. Uh, the tutorials uh, don't start this week. They're going to start on Thursday of next week. Okay. Um, so that's the tutorials. Mm, the tutorials will also be on Zoom. Uh, and don't bother asking me whether they are mandatory. Uh, you're all adults. You can decide for yourselves whether you need the tutorials or not. Okay. Okay, now um, th this course. This course is... Um, is, uh, is basically your, your introduction to um, modern mathematics. Uh, so it's, uh, we're, we have to make a, a break uh, between what you learned in high school and what you will learn uh, after high school. And uh, nowhere is that break more visible than in this class. Um, it's, it's definitely going to strike you as bizarre. Uh, several things will seem very bizarre. Why are we focusing on such, um, conceptual issues, but really it's more like an operating system. We need to give you an operating system uh, to work with mathematical objects. And um, the operating system that you were given is, uh, is uh, ancient history. It's, it's like 19th century mathematics. So we need to update uh, your software. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, uh, I don't like textbooks in general. Um, I'm not going to be re relying heavily on the textbook for lecture material, um, but it's very important for you to learn how to read mathematics and to be able to absorb uh, kind of complicated subject matter from text rather than just being explained to you verbally or visually. So um, we definitely do need to have a textbook. And this textbook uh, is the one that we've come to an agreement with, with uh, with uh, Math 247. So both Math 240 and Math 247 will be using this textbook, Linear Algebra Done Right by Sheldon Axler. Right now it's in the third edition. I don't really care which edition you use. In fact, I prefer the second edition uh, because it's a lot, it's formatted in a simpler way, like just aesthetically it's simpler. But uh, anyway, this textbook is pretty good. It's- um, uh, Is the one that we've come to an agreement with, with uh with uh, Math 247. So both Math 240 and Math 247 will be- Sorry, who is speaking? 
Mr. Algebra done right by Sheldon Maxler. Right now is the third edition. I don't know why, if why is um why is Kanishk Devgan's microphone? Yeah. Oh yeah. So by the way, Syed, the other thing you need to worry about is some bizarre reason some someone's mic might turn on. And so I could hear my my own reflection. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye on uh, that. I'm. You should have the power to mute everyone, just okay. hopefully not me. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, yeah. So we're we're going to use uh, Sheldon Axler's book, um, and we're going to cover uh, chapters one through five, and there will be some extra material. Okay. Um, no textbook is uh, perfect. Everyone is going to have a different viewpoint on which textbook is better than, I mean, my personally, my personal favorite textbook is this one, Linear Algebra by Hoffman and Kunz. Um, no, one, uh, I'm, I'm, no one would agree with me. It's, a, it's an extremely dry, dense, impossible to read book, but that's my favorite. So just be, be glad that I didn't pick my favorite. I'm picking one that I think is conceptually clean, uh, modern, and um, good for learning, learning the algorithm, the, the algorithms and the structures that we're going to need. Um, uh, of course, there's also this one, uh, Linear Algebra Done Wrong, uh, which was obviously written after Axler's textbook. Uh, that, one's, that one's not bad at all. Uh, all of these are, are worth uh, taking a look at. But don't make the mistake of switching between various textbooks. Pick one, and I suggest that you pick this one, the, the main textbook. I will be assigning readings in the, in the assignments, um, and uh, they will be from this book. OK, now assignments. Um, oh, yeah, and also, I forgot to mention, Syed, you probably, you, you probably are on top of this, but admit people who are in the waiting room. Yeah, OK. So. Um, Okay, assignments, I've sent you the first assignment. The assignment should be, uh, the way that it works is that I uh, create the assignments in a software called Crowdmark, okay? And I enroll people into Crowdmark based on whether they are in Quercus or not. And if you just, you know, if you just five minutes ago enrolled into Quercus, then your uh, username wouldn't have been, uh, wouldn't have been, uh, uh, uploaded to Crowdmark. So Crowdmark doesn't know you exist, okay? So uh, I will, after this class, just check and you know update that. But if you are not getting your Crowdmark assignment, um, after a while, let's say after today, you should email me um, and let me know so that I can update you in the Crowdmark. So Crowdmark should have sent you the first assignment. And this assignment is uh, personalized. The link to your Crowdmark is personalized. You will, um, you will do your assignment on paper just the way you would normally do, but just make sure that you separate each question on different sheets of paper, okay? And then what you'll do is you'll take photos or scan those pieces of paper and they will be uploaded to Crowdmark based on the link that you received. Then the TAs will mark that online and you will see their comments once I um, release the assignment to you. Um, that's the way it's going to work. So all the assignments will be done through Crowdmark. And we're going to have those assignments. Uh, you know, we're going to be able to look at those assignments throughout the whole year. Um, and the way that it will work is that uh, the assignment will be divided into different sections and all the different TAs will be assigned a different section. So that means that uh, each question will be marked uniformly by uh, one of the TAs. And so um, the important thing about that is that um, they're going to have a kind of system uh, to decide on the marks and that system will be applied equally. So you may or may not agree with the way that the mark is, uh, is applied, but it will be applied equally across the board um, and so that, uh, that kind of avoids any, uh, avoids most of the problems um, with, with uh, assignments. Okay, so uh, some, some advice about assignments, because you have one right now that you're going to uh, work on. So 
my advice for the first assignment is to do it entirely on your own with no help from uh, your, your classmates or friends. You need, to get a, you, get, you need to get a feel for what you're capable of doing um, before getting help. On the other hand, we do have a class Piazza. So Piazza is a question and answer website. Let me, um, let me try to bring it up here. Uh, so you see the piazza, right? Okay. So here we see that um, there's a question that I put up just as a test. You should read the question and look at the answers. So uh, Marcello also already responded and there was a, um, there was a question by another student and another response by another student. Um, so what you should do, so there, there is no association between the Piazza and Marx. There is no, uh, there are no bonuses for Piazza. There are, it, it is completely unrelated to your Mark. So you should feel free to ask as many questions as you want, no matter how basic on Piazza. Um, you can ask questions uh, anonymously, they will be anonymous to your classmates, but they won't be anonymous to me. But I still, I, I don't have, I literally do not have time to check Piazza and try to figure out um, who is uh, asking which questions. I will, I will try to answer as many questions as possible. But one of the TAs um, uh, is, um, um, who is in charge of Piazza? Actually, it's Walid. So there's one, one, of, the, uh, one of the TAs uh, Walid is in charge of Piazza and he will be um, spending a lot of time uh, answering your questions there. And that, uh, that's very useful because then, um, you know, you'll be able to see the questions that your cl classmates are asking and, and often you will have the same problems as, as they will. Okay, so my, as I said, my, my, uh, my advice for the first assignment is to do it entirely on your own. But for the subsequent assignments, and this advice holds for the other classes, you need to be very careful about um, unintentional plagiarism. I mean, you have to, I, I'm assuming that you'll try not to plagiarize, but you never know. Uh, I mean, what's the point of taking a class like this if you intend to plagiarize? I think it's, uh, that would be the most pointless thing to do. You might as well take uh, a, a lower level, level class. But anyway, um, uh, to avoid, you know, because of the fact that uh, one TA will be marking all of the answers to one of the questions, they're going to very easily notice when two assignments are uh, similar. So um, my advice is that if you do discuss the, uh, the problems with each other, um, don't look at your actual written work. Just don't even look at someone's written work because if you see it, then that will tend to appear in your own work. Um, you would be surprised how the mind works that it can actually reproduce verbatim uh, certain things without your intent. So um, don't look at other people's written work under any circumstances. That's my advice. Um, okay, uh, course notes. So course notes will be posted um, uh, every week. Um, so you can, um, you can look at those, but they are my handwritten course notes. Um, and there will uh, also be uh, volunteer note takers who will provide um, notes that typically are more legible than mine. But anyway, uh, course notes will be provided and um, the video will be accessible too. So the video of the, of the class will be um, available. Um, okay, now uh, the most important part is the decision on the uh, marking scheme. So <clears throat> we will not have any exams uh, in the usual sense in this class. Uh, they will all be assignments. Um, I believe that, um, so I, I'm going to aim for 11 assignments. I can't really change this once I've told you this today, but we could vote on it in principle. If we wanted to change this, I'm gonna aim for 11 assignments equally weighted and the lowest two will be dropped. Now, this is important. There are no late assignments of any kind under any circumstances for any reason, no matter what happens. If you have uh, uh, tuberculosis, that's 
unfortunate. I will do, you know, I'll, um, I'll help you as much as I can, but there are no assign late assignments of any kind for any reason whatsoever. Um, that's why I'm dropping the last, the lowest two is in case you have some kind of, you know, statistically you're going to, and you're going to encounter some kind of a problem. So um, the, la the, the lowest two will, will not count. Um, the other thing that we're going to do, and I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to um, get the technology working for this is uh, mini, mini quizzes in class. So these are real time, easy mini quizzes um, that, uh, that will take you know only five minutes or something in the middle of a class. Um, uh, so those will happen and they will be worth 15% of the final grade. Um, that is, uh, uh, that the reason that I'm doing that, uh, that is a kind of annoying for me because it takes a little bit of time away from my class. But the reason that I'm doing it is actually for your benefit. Um, when you have all of your classes happening on Zoom, or on online, there will be an uh, there will be an accumulating pressure on you on you to not attend the classes in real time. The later that we get in the semester, the more work you're going to have, and the less inclination you will have to actually watch the courses in real time. And then what will happen is that you will eventually just not be able. You won't even have time to watch all these accumulating courses. So it. To try to avoid this disaster, um, I'm going to try to incentivize you to actually um, attend the classes in real time. And so that is um, my attempt to do you a favor. Um, you can look at this code of behavior on academic matters. Uh, you, you, bas you basically don't want to be um, involved with plagiarism. It is uh, not a pleasant experience. Uh, okay, and then the last thing I, I want to say is um, how to do well in this class. Well, this is going to be difficult. This is not like a class, like any class that you've taken um, in high school. Uh, it's really about learning a new language. It's about training your mind to think in a more modern mathematical way. Um, you need to spend time with the material without distractions. You, you need to be able to sit there and think you know, you have to kind of turn off all your notifications for, for an hour or something and sit and think about what is a vector space? Um, you know, what is a field? What is a set? What is a map of sets? What is a linear map? What is composition of linear maps? Um, what is the Jordan canonical form? Um, you know, these things you, you, you need to... Um, uh, it's one thing to watch a video, uh, but... Um, you know, in order to really understand the material, you need to work on the assignments in quiet time and you need to think in your quiet time. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to say about the syllabus. So, um, so Marco, there are a couple questions. In yeah, the chat. I'm, I'm now opening it up to questions. So, okay. Uh, um, if you can, you is there a way for you to like unmute a person and ask them to start asking their question? Sure. Um, let me see. So I got to find them in this list of participants here. All right. So Ruben, um, you had a question about the assignments. If you want to ask. Yeah. So we're gonna have a week to complete them, right? It's not gonna be like one week. That's right. Okay. And is then, that what uh, you were asking? Sorry, I, I kind of blurted it out. Yeah, based off the chat, I think that was okay. the question. Yeah. All right. So, Shi Chen, you have a question about the quizzes? How long does it take? Oh, sorry. No, I'm, I shouldn't. Uh, so, it'll be will you notify beforehand when there will be quizzes? You're going to get them in your, in your email. The quizzes are distributed through an email link. It's a personalized email link that you cannot share with anyone. And then you're going to, uh, you're going to receive the, the assignment and then you're going to upload the result. So I put the, I put the first assignment up and you should have uh, received it already. And if you did not receive the assignment already, 
it's because I haven't updated your Quercus status into the CrowdMark software, which I'll do later today. Okay, and then Natalie also has a question. So Natalie, go ahead. Um, I'm not gonna get my like University of Toronto email until like ne early next week, late this week. So is there any way that I can have like access to these links for my personalized link without having that email? You should email me. Uh including your email address and uh, just mentioning this problem and then I'll manually add you to CrowdMark. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm looking at the participant list, but no one is using the raise hand. Is that because there is no raised hand uh, feature? Oh, there is a raised hand feature. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you use the raised hand feature, then the hand raisers, they rise to the top of the participants list. So it's easy to, to click on them. Oh, but somehow the, the raised hands have disappeared. Oh, I see that people were just testing it out. Any more questions? All right, Samuel, do you have a question? Yeah, so I saw this in the chat and just nobody answered it. So I just figured I'd ask it. Um, Cause you had mentioned that quizzes would be, sorry, my mic is not down. Sorry, my bad. Um, someone had asked, because you mentioned that quizzes would be 15%. Are yeah. the other assessments going to take up the other 85%? Yes, that's right. Okay, okay. It's just want to make sure. Up. Yeah, well, I know just some classes like presence has an importance too. So just want to make sure that those are the two factors. Uh, that I figure the, the presence and the quizzes are intermingled. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Gal, you also have a question? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask. Well, um, I know it defeats some of the incentive, but will we be notified as to which classes will have like a mini quiz? No, no, I can't. I can't do that. Okay. Um, and but, but typically, once I get this software working, it'll be every class. Okay, so it should yeah. be on like the previous material, right? Probably the last class's material. Yeah, or even just what I'm saying in class at the moment. These will be easy snap questions, like you know, like um, you know, there'll be there'll be easy snap questions that are just incentivizing you to pay attention to what I'm saying. Okay, thank you. All right, so thank you, Surui so Chen. Gamification. That's what it is. Surui so Chen. You have a question? Yes, I have a question that my appointment for my T card will be on next week. So I don't have my YouTube mail and that, that ID right here. So what can did I you do hear, to access so Did you hear? I, I got it. Did you hear the, someone else asked that question? So it's. Yeah. So just email me with your problem and giving me your email address so that I will manually add you to CrowdMark. Um, my email address is my personal or the UT email address. Just all we need is your email address so that we can send you the assignment. So just email it to me. Okay. Okay. When I get my UT email address, right? If you, if you don't have your email address in time, your official email address, then you can send me your personal address and I will manually okay, okay. add it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So thank you, Omar. You can go next. Um, hello. Uh, concerning the uh, quizzes and exams, uh, will, uh, what is the weight of those and what is the weight of the uh, nine ass uh, assignments that you'll be assigned? It was already, just check the syllabus. It's, I, I already discussed. Look at the no, syllabus meant, page and it's there. You mentioned that there are only 15% for the online quizzes and 85% for the rest. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but the, uh, the final exam, what's the weight of that? Uh, or yeah, you, you may, maybe missed the, the, the key point. There is no exam. Um, okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not, I'm not picking on you. I'm sure that other people have didn't clue in on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? So I'm not going to do all the questions, but uh, anyone, mm, if your, if your question is not that urgent, l lower your hand.
Okay, let's go through a couple right. a couple more and then I'll start. Camden, I think you're next. No, Camden. Hey, um, so mine's actually been covered already. I was just asking how to lower the the hand. Okay. Don't, 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 yeah, figure it out. It's, it's <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> yeah, it's the same button to raise it. Okay. Uh, Kevin? Kevin Kong? You can also, if it's not such a, uh, if it's not such a, a big question, you can also just ask it in the chat and people will help you. Yeah, I'll be monitoring the chat. I'm interested in, in, uh, in really important questions that, um, that need to uh, be addressed. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that. Um, okay, so let's let's start. Um... Uh, sorry, I, I had a question. So, what would you think? This is like a. It matters depending on like the person, but what would you think on average uh, we should spend each week on the assignments? How much time? Impossible to say. You need to look at the assignment and you need to gauge it for yourself. Okay, thank you. I would recommend starting early. Don't leave it till the last two days. You need to start early. And the other thing is that you should, you should down, you know, when you look at the assignment, you should take some time at the very beginning of the week to read the questions of the assignment and make sure that you understand the questions. Okay, because if you at least understand the questions, then in your subconscious, it will percolate. And your your uh, your subconscious will uh, will help you to to solve the problems. If you wait until the end to to um, to read the questions, then you you'll you won't use all of that sleeping time to uh, to generate the answers. So, even if you don't have time to work on it on uh, <clears throat> on Tuesday or uh, or on Thursday, you know today, you should at least read the questions. That's a that's a good um, a good thing to do. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with the very basics, okay? I'm gonna jump right into it. Don't panic. You're, some of you will definitely find that you were not prepared for this type of material. Don't worry about it. That's the whole point of taking this class. Let's begin with sets. So, so what is a set? I'm sure that many people have encountered this, but in case you have not, a set okay, is, a, is, is basically a collection of objects. Okay, but it's, it's a collection of objects which is viewed as an object in its own right. Okay, this is a little bit informal, but it's important, it's important to get the idea. Okay, and so if an object X is contained in uh, the set S, we say, we say that um, X is an element. of S. And we write this notation. This is the notation for that. Okay, it's a, it's a small E or epsilon or just a symbol, however you want to, to think of it. Um, so it's a, a set is something that you know, contain, it's a container for various things inside it. And those things could be, um, could be all kinds of things. 
Um, it could even be other sets. So let me give an example. Okay, so for example, we could have a set which I'll call P. I'm going to do you know, I'm going to construct a set by using braces, always these curly braces. Okay. Um, let's say we we use R, G, and B. This is a set of three letters. Okay. And the um, so I just want to say a couple of things about what can go inside a set. So um, uh, so the, so, sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm getting some kind of interference. Okay, so the order of these uh, elements, the elements R, G, and B, the order is, un is unimportant. The only thing that matters is that they are in P. They are elements of P. So, they, it, so P is a container. The container contains R, G, and B. There is no order, okay? So this would be equal to the same set as G, B, R, okay? And also it's the same set as R, R, B, G, B, okay? So these are, um, B is the same letter, which I, which I repeated in the construction of the set. I repeated it, but it doesn't matter. The, 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 there are only three distinct elements inside this set and the order or repetition is unimportant. Okay, next example. Sorry, we have a couple of raised hands here. I'll wait, I'll wait until the, uh, I'll ask for questions. Okay, sure. So the next one has the name bold Z Blackboard bold Z, okay, Fr from the German, okay, uh, and that contains um, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, dot, 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 okay, the set of integers. Okay, so this is an infinite set. It contains infinitely many distinct elements. Another example, um, oh dear. Okay, another example is uh, Q, blackboard bold Q, which is the set of fractions um, where you have a quotient of two integers where the second one Q is an integer but is not zero. So that uh, line is a um, is like a minus sign, which says to remove uh, the set of one element zero from the integers. And this uh, set of fractions is called the rational numbers. The set of rational numbers. And we also have um, uh, two more number systems, which will feature uh, in this class a lot, um, the real numbers and the complex numbers um, are other examples of infinite sets. Okay, and this example, these are all nice examples of sets, but I should have started with the simplest set of all, which I'll say is example zero. And that, that is, denoted by a circle with a line across it, and this is the empty set. It has no elements. Okay. Okay, any questions so far? So Krishna has a question. Go ahead. Krishna? Let's move Hello? to the next person. Okay, uh, Samuel. Samuel, you had a question? Yeah, I did, but somebody else answered in the chat, so it's, it's fine. Okay, so okay. somebody, if you had a question, but it gets answered, please lower your hand. Yeah, sorry, I kind of realized I didn't unclick it, my bad. Okay, sure. It's okay, we'll all get used to this in a, in a shortly. Yeah. 
Okay, so it looks like there's no questions anymore. Okay, so we've got sets. Now, um, this is also going to be important for us. So a set uh, is uh, finite uh, when it has um, a finite number of elements. OK, and um, this number is called the cardinality of the set. The cardinality is uh, what's called a natural number. It's, uh, I mean, natural numbers are a little bit annoying to define because everyone has a different opinion about whether the natural numbers should include zero or not. But let's include, well, we need to include zero for this purpose. So the non-negative integers, these, these are uh, the numbers which occur as cardinality or size. Cardinality and size is the, basically the same thing. Um, of a set, and we use that uh, we use the notation here um, with uh, with two straight lines. Okay, so the cardinality of the empty set is zero. The cardinality of p is three, um, and the other ones have infinite cardinality. Okay, now um, it's uh, okay. So what I've done here is introduced, introduced a, a, an idea, you know, a concept, which is the concept of set. Now, uh, but it's very important that you understand that this is incomplete at the moment. It's, it's very seriously incomplete. Why? The reason is because uh, I've introduced these objects, which are called sets, but I haven't explained how they relate to each other. Okay, and when without doing that, um, you haven't you haven't finished the description of the concept. So um, let let me just explain what I mean. Um, so we need to know what a map of sets, maps of sets, or maps between sets. Okay, this is. You know, I cannot describe sets. I cannot complete my description of sets without describing what a map of sets is. Okay, and this um, this is a concept that you've seen versions of, but the full power of it uh, you, you really need to absorb. And it, so we really need uh, to understand what is a map between sets. So, um, so let me just explain with a picture first. So if I um, if I have um, a set, you know, consisting of five elements, and I have another set consisting of three elements, suppose, okay, then a map or a mapping, okay, is really a it's it's um it's a way of sending objects from you know, from home to away. It's sending them out, sending objects out. So I need to send each object on the left to an object on the right. There is no constraint of which element um, I can send it to. I can send it anywhere I want. Okay. Okay, and this is an example of a map from the set, from the green set to the blue set. Okay, it's easy to create a map. You just need to go through all of the sets on the left. Okay, so what is the left? This is called the domain. The domain set. Okay, and so every every element of the domain set must be sent somewhere. Somewhere 
in the codomain set. Okay, so whenever you're talking about a mapping or a map between two sets or from a set to another, the set that is from is called the domain and the set that you're going to is called the codomain. And, and in order to define a map, you need to take every single element in the domain and send it somewhere, somewhere, right? Notice that there is a little element in the codomain who's all alone here, who never got mapped to, too bad. But notice that there is no one, no child is left behind in the domain, okay? But there are people in the codomain who are left out, okay? So the, notice, the notion of a, of a map is not symmetrical. It's very much not symmetrical, okay? Just by looking at this picture, you can see, okay? So, so let me give the formal definition. So a, a map from the set X to the set Y assigns element of X, a unique image or a unique element, F of X and Y. Okay. And the notation for this is like this. So this is key. So we, ha we have the mapping is called F. The domain is called X. So here I should uh, indicate that the domain is X and the codomain is Y. And F maps from X to Y. And the notation goes like this, that an element of X is mapped to the element F of X. Okay. And um, let me highlight this. Okay, notice, okay, notice that when we take an element in X, that element is mapped to F of X. But when we write the map, we do not have a little, a little straight line here, okay? This is in order to make the difference between the notation for a map and the notation for what a map does to a specific element. Okay. So um, let me give an example. So a, a color in the RGB system is a map, okay? It's a map from P, remember what P was? P was a set of three letters to a set of numbers, which goes from zero all the way to 255, okay? And this is the color. So for example, um, for example, white takes R to 255, G to 255, and B to 255. So the white color takes each of the three elements all get sent to the same element of the codomain. Okay, whereas, you know, red sends R to its maximum value and it sends G and B to their minimum values. Okay, every map from this set of three letters to this set of 256 integers represents a color in the RGB system. So the total number of maps 
from P to this set of numbers, the total number of these maps is the total number of colors in the RGB system. Okay, other example. Um, <clears throat> uh, you all probably studied maps from R to R. This is a favorite topic of high school math teachers all around the world, such as, let's say, f of x is equal to x squared plus x. Okay, This is a machine that takes a point in the domain, the domain being the real, uh, the real line. And for each one of those uh, points inside the uh, domain, it assigns in a algorithmic way, you know, some kind of process, it assigns a number in the codomain. So for example, uh, and, and, and the other thing that you did with these maps is that you typically graphed them by putting the domain on one axis and putting the codomain on the other axis. And then what you did was you said, well, for every point in the domain, I'm going to graph f of x, right? And so if you collect all of these things, you end, end up getting a graph of the, uh, of the set. Actually, in this case, it, it'll look like this. Oops, sorry, I'm not drawing very well. Someone is, uh, someone's microphone is on and I can hear their yawns. <laughs> okay, so, um, right. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna say today. So now what we have is we have sets and we understand how to relate sets amongst themselves. We, we know what maps between sets are. And what this means is that I've introduced for the first time a, what's called a category. Categories are a big deal in mathematics in the current day. And what you've just learned is the first example of a category, the category of sets. The objects of the category are sets and the maps in the category are maps of sets, okay? Don't worry, you don't need to know about categories, but you do need to know about sets and you need to know about maps between sets, okay? And these, these uh, maps that you've been learning in high school, these maps are typically called functions. Functions are, are usually maps where the codomain is equal to some number system. Like for example, the real numbers. Okay, so I'll, le I'll leave it at that. And then we'll continue on Tuesday. Um, I'll stick around for a few minutes now uh, for uh, questions, but, uh, but yeah, it is one o'clock. Uh, the syllabus took a long time. So see you on uh, Tuesday and take a look at your crowd mark. All right. So I think Harsh had a question for a bit. Harsh, if you want to go ahead. Hi. Uh, are the words uh, codomain and range used interchangeably? No. So what is the, if it is uh, possible for us to know now, what is the difference between these two words? Uh, range is the range of values that a, that a map takes. So it's, if, you know, if, for example, in the, um, in the example that I gave, you saw that all of the, um, like, for example, for the white color, uh, the white color sent R, G, and B all to 255. So the range is 255. The range is the subset of the codomain, um, which is taken by the values of the of the map. Okay, thank you. The range is sometimes called the image. That's the more standard uh, terminology. But there's no re there's no reason why a map should um, should take all possible values. It could only take. It's possible that it could be only. It could have only one value, one result, 
And in that case, the range would just be that one result. But range is not a, a typical way of calling it. It's better to call it the image of the map. Thank you. All right, so thank you. Uh, Renda, I think you're next. Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yep. Yes. Uh, sir, so the question is, uh, when we define the uh, definition of cardinality, uh, so it, it does it only approve to finite sets or it- Finite it, sets? It, yeah. No, it, uh, cardinality is actually defined for for any, any kind of set, but, um, but we are going to focus on finite sets. Okay. So it's important uh -huh. to know the theory for the finite case. Uh, I see, sir. Because the question was like, when, uh, w when I think about infinite sets, like uh, is the number of elements of odd number and uh, even number, uh, is their cardinality equal or can we prove uh, either one is larger? That's that's a very good question, but I'm talking about finite sets. Okay, so right. you can, yeah. So that's not. I don't. I don't really want to uh, go into that right now. Okay. Sorry, sir. But we will. We will talk about it soon. Thanks. All right. So Krishna, you're next. People have classes, so you should go to them. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, hi. Uh, so I was my my question is about the syllabus. I was wondering for the uh, in class quizzes that we have, are we going to be marked based off of completion, or will it actually be marked on the content of our answer? Sorry, you're asking about the, uh, the in class quizzes. Yeah, so the quizzes that we have in class. You know how you said that they're worth yeah. fifteen percent of our grade. Is that fifteen percent just solely off of completing the the quiz, or is it no, about the no. the answer? No, it depends on the answer of the quiz. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Otherwise, you could just create a bot that would just randomly answer the questions. In fact, Fair. you could probably create a bot that would answer the questions per correctly. Um, that would be a great achievement, but it would also mean you wouldn't learn the material. So it would be uh, shooting yourself in the foot. Absolutely. So anyway, Thank you should you. try to do the most difficult thing possible in this class. That's my <laughs> other piece of advice. Perfect. Thanks. If you're not doing something that's difficult for you, then, uh, well, I mean, what's the point of going to university? All right, so Diva, you are next on the list. Uh, hi there. My question hi. was just, I understand tutorials start next week. Do office hours also start next Thursday? Yes. OK, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, Sidhant, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You're next. Sidhant. Yeah, um, yeah. I think this might have been answered earlier, but um, I, I joined in a bit late. Um, like, is there some way we can access these notes that you make? Um, can we access it? Yeah, you missed you missed uh, the important thing. Notes. Just ask in the chat. Ask in the chat. Everything will be. Moved. I did. No one responded. Okay. okay. Everything will be made uh, available. All right. Um... Can you? Are you there? If you're not there, then Ted can ask his question. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, I can hear you. Yes. Hi. Uh, so I just I still don't understand like the difference between the two arrows, like the the big X to big Y and the other one. So when you have a, a regular arrow. Okay, then what's on the left is the domain set. Yeah. And what's domain, on the right totally. is the codomain set. Okay, actually, it's not important that it's left or right. It's more that the, the arrow has a tail and a, and a tip. What's in front of the tip is the codomain. What's in front of the tail is the domain, right? But the other type of arrow is different. What's at the beginning, what's at the tail of that type of arrow, the one that has the straight line, you know, coming out yeah. uh, on, on that tail end, you have an element, you have an element, you do not have a set, you have an element of, of the set X. And on the, oh, on I the, tip, see. So it's like a, the tip, you have an uh, element says to says an element to element. Yes. The difference is that you, you need a different notation mm -hmm. when you're talking about a map between sets and the result of applying a map to an element. 
Those are two different things and they need two different arrows. And why is that? Why do we need like two notations? Well, I mean, why don't we, I mean, why do you need a different name from the other guy? Sure, okay. different. Yeah. Thank you. It's not a good idea to call everyone by the same name. It would be a lot easier for me to remember though. Yeah. All right, so King Yu, um, I think you managed to unmute yourself. You have yeah. a question? Okay. Just have a question here. So where can we find the posted uh, recorded lectures and the course notes? They're gonna be on the, on the website. Everything will be accessible from the web page or from Quercus. Okay. Oh, so thanks. I will. I will actually. Sorry. I, actually, for the links to the videos, I will send them to you through Quercus. Okay. Thanks. But it's also you should have the link to the YouTube live stream. So maybe I'll put it back. Put it again. There it is. Oops. Sorry. I accidentally sent it privately. That was not intentional. Yeah. Someone else put it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we got a lot more questions. I'm gonna, uh, sit, I'm gonna sit here for another two minutes, so uh, let's go. All right, Pengue. Are you there? Yep, can you hear me? Yep. Great, so actually I got a question about the RGB example. Yeah. Because I, I saw the definition of a map of a set is that every element in the X set is sent to a unique element in the Y set, but yeah, so what that means, let me just cut you off. Yeah. When someone says that the the point in the domain, every point, every point in the domain is sent somewhere, mm -hmm. and it's sent to a unique element. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that it's sent to a specific element and not to two elements. Right? We cannot have a yeah. map which sends R to the numbers three and seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the R must be sent to three unique number, a unique number in the codomain. So it can send, so it actually can send to like a, com a unique combination of the element in the Y set. What? Is that what you mean? Because no. every element of the domain must be sent to a single element of the codomain, okay? You could imagine, you know, some people, they send an email to one person, right? But some people, they reply all. So they send an email to multiple people. That, that's right. not a map because they're sending the email not to a unique person, but to a whole oh. bunch of people. Right, yeah. I think I got it, yeah. Thank you. All right, so Charlie, I'm gonna go next. Um, yeah, so I just kind of wanted like a little- I can't hear you. Oh. Louder. Um, um, uh, what, sorry, the, can I just get like a definition of a codomain? Like the, cause you mentioned what the, the definition of a range is and I'm just kind of curious, like I wanna try and figure out the difference between a range and a codomain cause I don't remember the definition you gave earlier. So range, range, well, we, we haven't talked about range. Range should really be called image. Oh, right, image. About, you know, if I send, if I send, <clears throat> if I send an email, if everyone in this class sends an email to someone in this class, okay, then whoever receives an email is in the image. If everyone decides to send an email to Howard, okay, everyone sends an email to Howard, then he's the, he's the image. He's the only person in the image. He's the only one in image in the range, okay? But we could have sent the emails to anyone. Who could we have sent it to? Anyone in the codomain. Oh, the codomain is the all possible recipients. Oh, okay, I get it now. Okay. Now, you. Well, you asked an interesting question, which is how do you define the codomain, right? So actually the truth of the matter is that the, the notion of domain and the notion of codomain, okay, they are, they are not defined in, independently, they're not in, they're not defined in and of themselves. They are actually part of the definition of a map. Okay, so okay. a map consists of specification of two sets, one of which is called the domain, 
Another, the other of which is called the codomain. And then the map is the assignment of you know, an element of the codomain for every point in the domain. So the definition of domain and codomain are part of how we define a map because we cannot define a map without specifying the domain and the codomain. Right, okay. However, the, the range or the image is a property of the map. Every map, okay, will have, you, you know, you can, you can investigate the, the map, you can investigate the email uh, trail, right? And you can see who received those emails. I mean, we know that everyone in the class could have received them, but we may want, want to know who exactly received them, who is the image. And so that is not part of the definition of the concept of a map, but it's rather, it's a property of a specific map. Right. So like if, say, the, the domain and codomain, or like, yeah, the codomain was like the earth, yes. but you were just taking a map of like Ontario, then your image would just be of Ontario. You wouldn't have the rest of the earth, even though that's part of the codomain. Yeah, yeah. You need to decide what the codomain and the domain are at the beginning when you're first defining your map. Okay. And uh, you can choose... You know, once you've chosen the domain and the codomain, there's plenty of different maps, and all those maps could have different images. Okay. But they will all have the same domain and the same codomain. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're done. See you on Tuesday. Uh, if you have more questions, go on the piazza and ask them there. Okay. Use the piazza. It is a great resource. Uh, you just need to uh, get started and you'll get used to it and, and, and use it. Okay, have a great beginning of term. Don't let uh, the, don't let the uh, zooming get to you. <laughs>